Ever wonder why weight loss seems like an uphill battle for some, while others seem to shed pounds effortlessly? Well today, you're gonna learn the truth about fat loss. Let's dive straight into it. So there's a swallow misconceptions around weight loss that often lead us astray, making the journey to a healthier self a confusing path. So the first and perhaps the most common misconception around weight loss is that weight loss is a universal process or that there's a one size fits all method. And sadly, that's not always the case. Just because something may work for your favorite influencer or work for your friend or family member doesn't necessarily mean that's going to work for you. That's why some people can get fantastic results using a low carb diet for example while other people get better results using a keto diet while other people can get fantastic results without even doing a proper diet whatsoever. Think of your body as a unique type of machinery with its own set of instructions. While some machines may run better on a high protein, low carb diet, while others might require a high fat diet. Some may require more physical activity while others may require less. While there are general principles of fat loss that everyone should follow, it's really about making a tailored approach towards your fat loss goals. When it comes to the four rules that everyone should generally follow concerning fat loss, rule number one is that whatever diet method you do decide to choose, that diet method should be sustainable long term. The whole goal behind dieting is creating a slight calorie deficit or in other words, eating slightly less calories than your body requires in a day to survive. That way your body has no other choice but to actually tap into its fat source to create energy, creating fat loss. However, you don't want to go into too high of a calorie deficit or do too extreme of a diet. So how exactly do we know when enough is enough? In order to properly establish a good calorie deficit, you first have to know what are your maintenance calories or in other words, how many calories do you need in a day just to survive? I've covered this before in past videos, but a very simple way to calculate this is simply get your current weight and multiply that by 15. That's going to give you an average result of what your maintenance calorie should be. Once you do have this number, the idea is to establish a slight calorie deficit anywhere from a 10 to a 20%. So for example, let's say that you currently weigh 200 pounds. That would mean that you would need 3000 calories to maintain your current weight. From here, you can start cutting anywhere from 300 to 600 calories every single day, effectively creating a good healthy deficit. This rate of fat loss is going to allow you to lose roughly around a pound of fat per week, which also equates to about 52 pounds of fat in a year. Also importantly, it's sustainable long term. The last thing that you want to do is do an extreme fat diet where every single pound that you lose, not only do you gain back, but you gain back double. Remember, fat loss is not a sprint, it's a marathon. The second rule that you have to follow is that no matter what type of diet that you do choose, make sure that you're eating enough protein to actually spare and retain the muscle mass that you currently have. And yes, in my opinion, you should even follow this when you're doing a keto diet. See, protein is the building blocks of life, literally. Protein helps repair muscle tissues. It helps preserve any lean muscle mass that you do have. It aids in proper digestion, among other benefits. Now, key word that I mentioned is it helps you retain lean muscle mass. When you're trying to lose weight, you're actually trying to lose fat. There's a really big difference between losing weight and losing fat. Not eating enough protein while you're slimming down is going to lead to your body losing a lot of lean muscle mass, which could lead into decreased energy levels, decreased strength, and an overall unappealing appearance. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to go out and eat 9,000 grams of protein per day. As long as you eat simply one gram of protein per lean body mass that you currently have, you'll be fine. Now, what type of diets are there and which one may be a better suit for you? Number one, we most recently covered a ketogenic diet. A ketogenic diet or, or a keto diet is a high fat, moderate protein diet with extremely low levels of carbohydrates. The idea is to drastically decrease the amount of carbohydrates that you eat in a day to less than 50 grams per day to force your body into a state called ketosis where your body is actually burning ketones as fuel for fat loss. The main goal behind this diet is to change your body's energy source from carbohydrates to fats. For people interested in starting a ketogenic diet, 
they should transition in slowly, slowly removing carbohydrates while at the same time increasing their good fat intake. And good sources of fats can come from nuts, oils, and fish, among other good sources of fats. If you are interested in hearing more information of a ketogenic diet, I did cover an entire video of that, so make sure you watch that after this video. Next up, you have your classic high protein, low carbohydrate diet. And this diet is literally how the name implies. The goal is to have a low to moderate intake of carbohydrates while having a high intake of protein. Just like any other diet, this diet has its pros and its cons. However, it could provide excellent results for those trying to lose some fat. So how does it work? Well, in this diet, you're gonna aim to eat at least, at least one to 1.6 grams of protein for every pound that you currently weigh. This is gonna help you preserve any muscle mass that you do currently have, create new muscle if you are hitting the gym, and most importantly, normally meals that are high in protein keep you full longer, meaning it'll be easier to maintain that calorie deficit throughout the day without feeling extreme levels of hunger. When it comes to carbohydrates, slow digesting carbohydrates will be your best choice here. Think oats, veggies, and among other sources. Now, while it is a low carbohydrate diet, it's important not to take it too extreme. Carbohydrates are still your body's preferred source of energy, so make sure that you don't cut out too many carbs if you do decide to go down this route. While there are a ton of different diets out there, there's the low carb, there's the keto, there's the carnivore, there's the juicing diet. The thing is, there's no best diet. Asking which is the best diet is like asking which is the best food in the world. That's just impossible to answer. With so many choices and so many preferences, what might be the best for you cannot really be the best for someone else and vice versa. So don't think which diet is the best diet. Think which diet works for me long term and helps me achieve my goals. As long as whatever diet you choose helps you maintain a calorie deficit and helps you maintain your goals long term, you're golden now. That alone, is that enough? Well, not necessarily. Now is the time when we talk about incorporating physical activity into your daily regimen. Exercise has numerous benefits for your health and for your fat loss journey. Exercise not only helps you burn more calories, it helps you build lean muscle mass, it helps you increase your cardiovascular capacity, leading to a stronger heart and increased health overall. And when it comes to incorporating physical activity into your daily regimen, there are a wide range of options. You can consider walking, jogging, you can consider swimming, playing any low impact sports, all of these are fantastic forms of exercise that help you increase your overall health and burn more calories. You could also consider resistance training or weightlifting, which is a real game changer. You see, the thing is, once you incorporate resistance training into your daily regimen, not only is that going to help you burn more calories while you're exercising, it's also going to help you burn more calories while at rest because you're going to be able to increase the lean amount muscle mass that your body holds. And the more lean body mass that you have, the more calories that you burn throughout the day, even while you're at rest. Also, by adding resistance training, you're not just going to be losing fat. You're also going to be adding muscle mass at the same time. Or in other words, you're going to be toning up and, sco and sculpting your body, allowing you to achieve that lean toned look with those lean abs and those nice glutes if that's what you're into now for the summertime. When it comes to incorporating physical activity into your daily regimen, especially weightlifting, start slowly and progressively increase the difficulties of, of your exercises over time. If you are just starting out right now, consider working out three to five times a week, allowing plenty of time for your body to rest and heal up between sessions. And make sure that no matter what diet method you choose and whatever training frequency you do apply, make sure that you prioritize to get enough rest. Nothing is gonna set you back more in your weight loss journey than not getting enough rest every single night. Make sure that you prioritize getting seven to nine hours of sleep. So make sure you turn off your electronic devices about an hour before you plan on going to sleep, making sure that your room is nice and dark and cold without any noises or distractions. Try to keep your stress levels as low as humanly possible. That way the next morning you have enough energy to crush your day, get your workout in, and just be that amazing boss that you are. And hey, 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure you watch this video next for even more fat loss tips, okay?